Well, the burst of cold we just had may have you wondering what will winter look like here in SoCal this season? As KCAL meteorologist Marina Jerica tells us, it's not so cut and dry. Unlike last year, we are not looking at a cut and dry winter weather forecast. Last season, there was a historically strong El Nino in place and with a developing weak La Nina weather pattern and an area of warm water developing in the Pacific Ocean, there are a lot of variables at play for this year's winter outlook. Back-to-back -back winters with blockbuster storms have replenished water reservoirs and quenched the parched landscape for now. The strength of the La Nina developing this year will be one of the key factors in how long we stay drought-free. The surface temperatures of the Pacific Ocean around the equator continue to be colder than normal. This is a good sign that we are transitioning towards La Nina conditions. La Nina is a complex climate pattern that affects weather all around the world. It begins in the Pacific Ocean, where sea surface temperatures drop below average in the central and eastern parts of the ocean. Now, this cooling triggers a chain reaction in the atmosphere. Colder ocean water causes the jet stream, which is a high altitude current of wind that influences storms and temperatures to shift northward. So for us, this often means drier conditions. Now with a weaker La Nina this year, these changes may be less noticeable, but could still mean lower than average rainfall for Southern California. So when a La Nina develops, a ridge of high pressure usually sets up somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. So if it's parked right offshore, it blocks storms from coming into California. But if it's pushed further away, storms can move in. Based on water temperatures in the Pacific right now, I think that the Northwest will be hit hard at the back end of fall into December. So basically right now. And then it may shift into California for a while in January. We are also closely eyeing an area of unusually warm water in the Northeast Pacific Ocean that could drive storm activity if it were to shift off the coast of California. Now, if we can get systems tapping into that warm water, that will drive that moisture towards us. However, as we have seen in the past, there's really no guarantee. Since 2000, there have been four weak El Nina events. We saw as little as two inches of rain back in 2006, 2007, and as much as 21 inches of rain in 2004, 2005, which proves it can be a feast or famine. La Nina winters can also bring gusty winds to the region. We'll likely see periods of strong offshore winds. These winds can dry out vegetation even further, increasing wildfire risk. It's not necessarily a direct effect of La Nina, but in combination with drier conditions, it creates a recipe for fire hazards. We had numerous fires break out late summer and in the fall. And even with the benefit from our last two very wet winters, the acreage burned so far is over three times the amount as last year. And we are already very close to reaching the five year average. So either way this winter weather season goes, it's good to be prepared. While the impacts may be small, the weak La Nina can still make a difference in our water supply and wildfire risks. Southern Californians stay proactive about water conservation. We'll have to hope for some good storms to come our way. Marina Jerica, KCAL News.